Hello, and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your cook, Uncle Roy, and this is my lovely assistant, <laughs> Mrs. Rover herself, Callie Alley. Come here, Callie Alley. Oh, come here. Oh, oh. Come here, let everybody see ya. Come here, come here. Oh, yeah, sit pretty, sit pretty. Oh, sit pretty, yeah. Look at Mrs. Roper, she's got a boa. <laughs> it's just too queer. <laughs> oh, the poor little girl. Yeah, look, you look like Mrs. Roper, lounging around. We really took her to the uh, beauty parlor to have her coat and teeth cleaned and her butt cleaned out and nails trimmed and everything else. And they usually take and they put little ribbons on her in her on her ears. Well, when she got back today. <laughs> She's got this big bow. I'm like, oh my God, she looks like Mrs. Roper from Three's Company. <laughs> we used to have an old neighbor, an old couple there called the Jaspers, the old drugstore. Heine and Dorothy Jasper. And they lived in Chippewa in the summer and then they lived in Yuma, Arizona in the winter. And she was just like that, like Mrs. Roper. She was, before Mrs. Roper even came on TV, she, Mrs. Jasper was like that. She wore these big old boas and these big moo She was a tall, slender woman and her husband was really tiny and short. And she had these big, big loud print moo with the thongs and the big plastic flowers on the thongs. And uh, she had her hair was, uh, bright orange red in a <laughs> French twist with a big blue font and the orange lipstick and because they're from Arizona that he's big she had this big uh, lots of um, sterling silver and quartz or uh, turquoise turquoise and silver you know because the Indians and she had this big gaudy jewelry on his huge earrings she always had these big poems so when I see Callie like that I'm like oh it's Mrs. Jasper <laughs> or Mrs. Roper from Three's Company <laughs> oh but she's so pretty anyway yeah always pretty <laughs> oh, too funny. So, in today's episode, we're going to be making um, chicken stuffed manicotti. Mmm, well, that sound good, Callie. Yeah, it's got something different. And of course, we got to start with our chicken breasts. And I only have two chicken breasts here because these are really, really thick, as you can tell. And I'm going to take and divide these in half lengthwise because I want to cut these up into chicken tender strips. It's like, it's like making, uh, you know, chicken tenders. So we just take and slice these up into, oh, about one quarter to one half inch wide strips. And I'm getting about four strips out of a out of a breast there, so I'll be getting about eight or so out of a whole breast. And we just cut this down. And of course these are already cleaned. I already had these pre-cleaned and stuck into my freezer bag and I just store these in the freezer. Whenever they're on sale I'll take them by at the chicken breast and throw them in the freezer. Just make sure you clean them up before you throw them in. And let's see, we'll cut this one in half also. Boy, these are thick, Callie. Oh, good Lord. Stuff these, you have to cook them like a turkey. <laughs> it would take a couple of hours. These are really thick ones, whoa. That's nice though. You can get a lot of uses out of it. Oh, look at her just sniffing away. She smells the raw food. Now we're gonna take and sprinkle just a little bit of garlic powder onto these strips. Mix that up a little. I don't like to use the garlic salt because I don't want to put salt in it, on it. There's too much salt in everything. And you can always add more salt on your own plate if you want more salt. But I always try and stay away from salt as much as I possibly can. So now we have our chicken breasts. And we're going to be stuffing our manicottis. Before we do that, we need to prepare our pan. And we just use a glass 13 by 12 inch casserole dish, a glass one. And we'll take and spray this first. And then we're going to take our spaghetti sauce. This is just a regular um, 26 and a half ounce can. You can get these large cans of tomato sauce. Or 
spaghetti sauce because it has seasonings in it. This is just the Rowney's brand, it's no big deal. But if you buy it in the can, it's the same as the stuff in the jars. And the stuff in the jars, they got tomato basil, they got the pepper, the three cheeses. You can add that stuff to your own regular sauce if you want to, you know. They charge you twice the amount for adding it to it, and it's not that big a deal. You can add it yourself for pennies. And this is just plain sauce. And what we're going to do is take our sauce and add three quarter cup of water to it. We want to water this down. Now I just love this, the canned sauces. For price wise, it's cheap. Very, very cheap. Costs almost two thirds less than the jar stuff. And not only that, it's, um, it still tastes just the same as all, as all the other ones. So it's, it's not that big a difference. Half is a quarter. And we just use a little whisk to get that mixed up easier. And while we're watering this down, is you're not going to lose flavor. Why? Well, we're watering down because we're going to stuff the manicotti and they're going in raw, not cooked. So that's why we need more sauce. We need more moisture. And we're going to take and pour, was that a third? A third of this into the bottom of the pan and we'll just spread this around. Now this is true with all your lasagnas and casserole dishes when you're doing this type of cooking. Is pouring the sauce in the bottom of your pan first and that keeps your pasta from sticking to the bottom of the dish. It really does. So if you're doing lasagna, you want to make just a little layer of sauce there just to spread on the bottom. Put your noodles and start building with your sauces and cheeses and everything else. But that's what really helps is a little bit of sauce on the bottom keeps it from sticking. It really works good. Now, we just take our manicotti and we just take and stuff these with our chicken. Now this is just raw chicken. Just put that right into the tube and just stuff it in there. And I sometimes might see, I get a butter knife, that works better. You don't want a sharp knife, otherwise you're gonna, you might slip and poke yourself, which happens a lot. But just take and shove that in there. This is such a simple recipe to make. There's only like four or five ingredients, that's it. See, now you just got that coming in there, just push that back in. So now you're raw. Maticotti is stuffed with raw chicken that's been seasoned with a little garlic. And then you just lay this in rows in your dish. And I'll just take and finish off this chicken and fill up the row and fill up the dish and then we'll come back. So this watered down sauce is gonna cook the manicotti. Very easy and very simple to do. And just make sure you get it all covered well because you, that's what's going to cook it is the sauce. So you want to be, and don't overlap them. You don't want to, you know, on top of each other stack because then they won't get cooked in between. Then we just take and cover this with foil. So we just take and cover the casserole dish with foil. Boy, what a procedure. <laughs> And we just seal that in nice and tight. We want to keep all that moisture in. That's what's going to cook the manicotti. So you don't want it to, to leak out all that moisture. And we'll just put this in a 300 degree, 350 degree oven, which I got preheated already, for one hour. And that's it. And then we'll take it out and we'll put on our cheese. Oh, there's Mrs. Roper. Look at her. <laughs> She's napping. She's getting tired. Oh, yeah. So, because we had chicken on, now we gotta make sure you sanitize your counter space. I always do this, and you may not see this, because I always cut a lot of my takes when I cook. I cut a lot of things out, because I have to squeeze it into a half an hour. 
So there's a lot of things you don't see me do, like washing hands and sanitizing equipment, especially with chicken, you gotta make sure you really sanitize your uh, knives and your cutting boards and everything else. And I always clean that up with uh, Clark's bleach spray or washing it with hot water and everything else. So I always make sure everything is clean and, sanita and sanitary before I even use things. You just don't see a lot of the behind the scenes. So now we're gonna move on to our next recipe and we're gonna be making a Danish almond uh, pastry coffee cake. Mmm, this is really, really good. Okay, for our almond pastry, our Danish almond pastry, we're going to be making, it's like a combination of layers that goes into the baking pan, into our around pie pan, cake pan. Anyway, so this is going to be phase two, and this is phase one, the crust. So we're going to start phase two right away. And for that we need one cup of water and one stick of butter. Butter. Be a nice rich coffee cake. And we're going to make, this is going to be like a pate show, which is like a cream, which is like a cream puff. And this, we just bring this to a boil on the stove. So we can start this, and while that's heating up. Oh, Cal, you don't have to run out of the basement. No, I won't burn anything. This is Roper. So we'll let that go. Meanwhile, we'll be making the crust. And in this, we need uh, one cup of flour. And this is going to go into our food processor because we want to get the uh, butter cut up really nice and fine. And then we're going to cut in a stick of butter. And I'll make sure this butter is ice, well, not, you know, really cold because you want it to be crumbly. And we'll just slice this in to the flour a, table, a couple of tablespoons at a time. Or cut the whole stick up into like tablespoon portions just so that it can take and process much nicer. Oh, Mrs. Roper, where are you going? Exiting stage left. Oh, no, no, no. You can stay up here. And then we'll just fix up. Uh, Pulse this together until we get it nice and crumbly like a coarse oatmeal. A coarse cornmeal. And then we're going to take and add about two to three tablespoons of cold water. And you want to make sure that's cold water so that it coagulates with the butter that's mixed up in the flour. And then we'll just stop when it starts to form a ball. This is just like we're making a pie crust almost. Very similar. And then we stop. You don't want to over process because the heat from the food processor, the friction is going to melt your butter. So you don't want to overdo it either. As soon as that starts to ball up and coagulates together, just to conform, stop. And this is our crust. Now we'll take and spray lightly our pan. You can use, uh, I think I will too. Use a little bit of the joy, Baker's joy. So they just have a grease and flour, just take some flours and greases all at the same time. This helps to keep it from sticking. And, oh, what's the matter, Mrs. Roper? You gonna go take a nap? So, oh, you wanna go night night? Oh, look at her. Yeah, she wanna go downstairs. She likes to go on my bed. There you go. Come back when it doesn't happen. <laughs> then we just take our crust and we just pat this into the bottom of our pan. And just spread this all around. Pat it then. Get it out to the edges. This just makes a lovely, lovely uh, crust. So nice and flaky. And that's because of the butter being blended in with your flour. So it's just like a pie crust. So you want to make sure you get it all around nice and even. And just pat it into the bottom of your pan. See? Now 
And that's easy enough. Now, back to the pate show, which is our cream puff filling. That was our butter and water came to a boil. And to this, we're going to be needing one cup of flour. Let's level that off because we don't want to end up with a dry pastry. It's always important to level off your ingredients. That goes in to our water along with a teaspoon of almond flavoring. And then we mix this together. And this is going to form a really thick paste, almost like a wallpaper paste. It's, it's going to be quite thick. Of course, your younger people don't know what wallpaper paste is because now wallpaper, you just got to wet it and throw it on. <laughs> when I was a little kid, mom and dad had to pick the old paste on the wallpaper. That was a messy chore. So now this all gets together, see? It's just like a big old thick flour paste. That's all it is. Now we put in three eggs. So you want to do three eggs like this. One at a time. Because it takes a little time to incorporate it all at once. And this is what your pate show or your cream puff is. This is what you make cream puffs out of. You can make clairs out of this. Just just this recipe. This part of the recipe. So this is an actual, this is a cream puff. And then that is it. And this goes right on top of our pastry crust. And you can see it's just a nice gooey paste. Forms and it's all together now. All that slimy eggs are all incorporated into the batter. So you want to make sure you mix this up thoroughly. Because you don't, you know, you don't want that egg separate. You want it to be enveloped in to the flour and water. Then this part you just take and you spread all over the top of that crust. This is very simple to do. And this is the Danish almond pastry, which when baked becomes nice and light and fluffy. It's an alternative to having a bread coffee cake because this is a flakier crust and filling. And then that's our almond pastry. Now this gets put into a 350 degree oven and gets baked for one hour. So we got stuffed manicotti on one side and a Danish almond pastry on the other. Okay, now our manicotti should be done. Oh, Cagliari's. Oh, we got lots of food in the oven. Oh. And we just take off the foil. Hoo, ha, hot, hot, hot. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hoo, hoo, hoo. That's nice and bubbly. Mmm. Yeah, look at Kelly Alley drooling. To finish this off, put one package of mozzarella, which is two cups of shredded mozzarella. And this goes right over the whole entire thing. And then we'll just put this back in the oven for five minutes until the cheese melts. And gets nice and bubbly and a little brown. And we'll have our chicken manicotti. Oh, that looks good, Kelly. Oh, look at her drooling. Waiting for samples. Oh. And this is our almond, Danish almond pastry. That's done. Let me just check with the toothpick, make sure. See, and that's nice and puffy. And then we'll just decorate that with frosting and some almonds and cherries. And that'll be our, our Danish pastry. Ooh, let that cool down, Callie's. Mmm, she can't wait.
And now, our manicotti is all done. Oh, Calliel, does that look beauteous? Oh. Then we just take some fresh chopped uh, basil leaves and just sprinkle this over the top. Ooh, Kelly Ellie, it looks so good. Ooh, look at her just drool. And this will be our chicken manicotti. And now let's serve this up. And this is the stuffed chicken manicotti. Mmm, don't that look good, Callie? Ooh, yeah, I can't wait to eat it. And then I just served it with some garlic toast on the side, and you can make a little tossed salad too if you'd like. It's a wonderful, quick, and easy meal to make. Oh, there's Mrs. Roper. Oh, Callie, Ellie. We're doing this. We're doing this. Oh, that was really good, wasn't it, Callie, Ellie? Oh, yeah. Chicken manicotti, ooh, delicious. Now we're gonna make the icing for the Danish almond pastry. And this is very easy also. This is just two cups of powdered sugar. And I just scrape it off on the inside of the bowl, or the bag, so I don't have to take and measure it out. You know, with the, with the knife, works just, just as easily. And then we need one stick of butter. And my butter was right in the refrigerator, so it was still really hard, so you want softened butter. If you put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds, it'll be nice and soft, without it melting. Then we just mix this up. Put it on low, otherwise pump sugar flies everywhere. And then we're gonna put in a little bit of almond extract. You wanna put in about a teaspoon. And then we just add a little bit of milk. Not too much now, you want to go a little bit at a time because it'll get really runny on you. And then we'll just take and frost our coffee cake. Now if you want to, you can put this into an icing bag and just have a small tip on the end of it, a solid circular one, not a star or jig jagged one, but a circular one. And you can squeeze this and just do swirly twirly designs all around it just every so often and I'll give you a really really nice presentation but I'm going to frost this entire top this way because then I'm going to take and put my almonds and cherries on top and that'll give it a nice presentation oh train going by Tally train going by And then we'll just decorate this with, with almonds and cherries. And this is our lovely Danish almond pastry coffee cake. Mmm, don't that look pretty, Callie? Oh, yeah. You can see what I did with the cherries and nuts and the frosting on top. It's a nice, pretty presentation. And then you just cut this in like you would slice the pie. It's a wonderful little breakfast treat. Well, Callie, let's see who wrote us this week. If you have any questions for Callie or myself, Mrs. Roper, <laughs> on cooking or baking or canning or gardening or whatever, feel free to write us at the Northwest Cooking Show at yahoo.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. And we might even put your question on the air. Ain't that right, Callie? Yeah, let's see who wrote us. You ain't nothing but a oh, where'd the question? Where'd the question go? So let's see who answered, who uh, wrote us this week, Callie. Who let the dog down? Oh. Who let the dog down? Oh, 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 Mrs. Roper already in position, look at that. Oh, the lovely collar. Oh, the boy just shows up so pretty when you sit like that. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do that to you, Callie. That was a beautician. She did that to you, yeah. Mrs. Roper. Dear Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, I'm new to cooking and baking, and I was wondering how do you cook, how do you bake drumsticks in the oven? Signed, Jim of Maple Grove, Minnesota. Okay, Jim. Oh, very easy. Very easy to do. Uh, just, uh, 
easiest thing to do would be to take like a Ziploc bag, throw in about, oh, I'd say, I don't know, about a cup, cup and a half of flour, and then salt and pepper. That's all you need is the salt and pepper. I could buy, oh, I'll go about a teaspoon of each, maybe. Mix that in together, and then rinse off your drumsticks, and then pat them dry. You don't want all that excess water on there. Just pat them dry with some paper toweling. So they're kind of, you know, you get, they're not completely dry, but they're not wet. You don't want them wet. You just want to rinse them off and get rid of the blood and all that stuff. And then you just pat them dry so they're still moist to the touch. Throw them in the bag, shake her up, boom, boom, boom. Then just lay them out on your cookie sheet. You can line your cookie sheet with aluminum foil to help prevent it from sticking, or just spray your sheet too. It will be uh, work just as well. I like to put the foil down because it really cleans up the mess a lot much nicer. And you can still spray the foil on it if you want to. Anyway, then you just take and pull your drumsticks out of the flour bag mixture and just shake off the excess flour and just lay those down in a row on your baking sheet. Then you can take and put those in the oven uncovered and it should probably cook in about 20 minutes, no more than that, otherwise they're going to get dry. As soon as the... Um, you can tell when they're done is at the end of the drumstick, when the skin starts to shrink up from the end of the joint, at the very end there, when it starts shrinking up like that, and you can see the bone there, then they're done. Uh, you can also take and stick a knife into the meat part and test it and feel if it's tender. If it still feels kind of, you know, a little jerky to push in, then it's not done yet. If it slides in nice and easy, then it's done. Now don't overcook them or you're going to dry them out too, and that's just as bad. Um, really bad then too for your chicken. So it's very easy to make though, just so shake and bake basically with flour, salt and pepper, throw them in the oven in about 20 minutes and that should be done. We hope that answers your questions Jim and thanks for joining the cooking and baking team. Callie and I like that too, yeah don't you Callie, yeah more people to watch, yeah. What was she waiting for the second round? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. So from Callie myself, we like to say from Mrs. Roper, we like to say healthy eating, be safe, and spend the sunshine. Ain't that right? Say goodbye, Mrs. Mrs. Roper. Yeah, say goodbye, yeah. <laughs>